Hello viewers, welcome to the new Island Health View, a program designed to bring you matters related to health in Dominica. I am your presenter, Raima Alfred. This program will be brought to you on Digital Play TV this and every other Friday. In this episode, we're going to take a look at cancer and how it has been affecting our Dominican people over the years. Cancer, which is also known as a malignant tumor or a malignant neoplasm, is a group of diseases involving abnormal cell growth with the potential to invade or spread to other body parts. Not all tumors are cancerous. Benign tumors do not spread to other body parts. Possible signs and symptoms of cancer include a new lump, abnormal bleeding, a prolonged cough, unexplained weight loss, and a change in bowel movement, among others. While these symptoms may indicate cancer, they also occur due to other issues as well. At present in Dominica, there has been an increase in cases of cervix, breast, thyroid, and prostate cancer, with a few recent cases of brain cancer. More on this when we come back. Stay with us. Your hands. I am Adora Tuse, health educator from the Ministry of Health. Proper hand washing protects against the spread of many common illnesses and germs. Wash your hands often with soap and water, or you may use a hand sanitizer. Remember, clean hands save lives. Protect yourself. A message from the health promotion of the Ministry of Health. Welcome back. We followed the Dominica Cancer Society to Laplane, where they held a community outreach program to educate the community members on cancer with a little bit of a concentration on breast cancer. During the community outreach program, which was hosted by the Dominica Cancer Society, Nurse Alison Samuel addressed the audience of women and educated them on cancer, including causes and preventative methods. As with most cancers, we always tell you, lifestyle is one of the protective factors against cancers. So you find that some of the risk factors for breast cancer will include your diet, will include your social habits of drug and alcohol use, okay? Because people who smoke, particularly um, tobacco, cigarettes, it is one of the things that is going to increase your risk because of all the cancer forming agents that are in a tobacco cigarette. When you look at one cigarette stick, you see that little stick? It has over 2,000 cancer-forming agents in there, okay? Always remember that. So if you know you have friends who smoke, we always say, let's encourage, let's be each other's support. Let's teach each other so that they know. And a, cancer, a, a cigarette stick, we tend to call it a cancer stick because it stimulates cells in a lot of organs. Uh, that and it can lead to cancer so that's for your social habits so one of the one of the preventive factors to preventing cancer most forms of cancer is to not smoke um, cigarettes tobacco cigarettes another thing is alcohol use if you use if you drink a lot of alcohol we tend to say you can have your alcohol in moderation one drink for a woman two for a man or better still none at all Okay? Because you never know who's going to respond to the stimulation of the alcohol. What are the risk factors associated with breast cancer? And it's very, very important that we understand them because you will recognize that as we speak of them, a lot of them are related to us being feminine or female. Okay? So obviously the first risk factor is the fact that we are women. So all women are at risk. Tell me why. Mm? We have breasts. 
and we have nice cushiony breasts, right? As compared to men. So like I told you earlier, men get breast cancer too, but because women have more breast tissue, then it's obviously all women are at risk, but some men, okay? No. As with most other conditions, particularly the chronic non-communicable diseases, as we get older, so increasing age is another risk factor. So whereas you will hardly find breast cancer occurring in an 18-year-old whose breasts are still, the person is young, so that person's breast tissue is still young, you find that as you get older, and we like to say 40 and above, but what we've noticed is that trend is changing. So you find that we have 30 year olds, 32, 35, 36, who are being diagnosed with breast cancer more and more, okay? But increasing age is a factor. Then you, if you have a family history or a personal history of breast lumps or breast cancer. So if when I was 16 years, I had, it was discovered I had a breast lump or 18 or 19, then the doctor took it off and said it was what we call benign or non-cancerous. Because I have a history of having had breast lumps, as I get older, it is very important that I always do my monthly breast examinations for myself. If your family, anybody in your family has had breast cancer, particularly if it's your mother, your sister, your aunt, your grandmother, close family, then your risk for developing breast cancer is much higher. There's a pretty word, it's called the menarche, which means your first period. So the woman who gets a first period very early, and that means if your period started between nine and 10, that's what we call early, it's called precocious puberty. So a woman who has had an early menarche is at higher risk, why? It simply means that if your periods started earlier, every month your breast tissue is being stimulated by the hormones that bring on your period. Okay? And likewise, if a woman has late menopause, so if you are 55, between 50 to 55 or older and you are still having periods, it means that whatever age your period started, you are still having hormonal stimulation of your breast for a much longer period. So whether you start it early or you continue into later age, these are risk factors for breast cancer. A woman who has not breastfed a baby is at higher risk. Again, you may wonder why and I will explain. If a woman gets pregnant, we know that pregnancy is supported by hormones and there's a particular hormone that stimulates your breast to get it ready for you to breastfeed your baby, okay? No. When that process happens, so you are pregnant and your breast got nice and ready and full to breastfeed the baby, but some women like to say, me, I'm not breastfeeding, you know, because my breast will fall down and all kinds of things like that. So the breast got itself nice and ready because that's how God did the process. And then when it was time to breastfeed the baby, you didn't breastfeed. So all that process, and you know that when you don't breastfeed, your breast gets swollen and hard and painful, right? So that's an inflammatory process. So you see this inflammation that happens because you did not breastfeed? Then that inflammatory process, what it does it may affect your breast and cause that kind of inflammation to later result in changes in your breast tissue that can result in breast cancer, okay? So it is more healthy for a woman to breastfeed rather than not breastfeed. If you find that you have any scaly areas on your breast, particularly around the nipples, you also need to ensure that you come to report it. Another thing that's very important to note, if the area, what the, we call this the areola, so if around here begins to look like, you know what orange peel looks like with all the dimples on it, right? So if you notice that it is dimpled and it begins to go in even more, then you really, really need to come and tell us.
okay? Because that can indicate that there's a cancer growing somewhere. Any redness on your breast, any discoloration is as a matter of fact that you know wasn't there the month before is something that you need to pay attention to. Very, very important. After the educational session was over, the ladies were all invited to receive a clinical breast screening, which was conducted by Nurse Samuel and a few other registered nurses who were present at the event. Feel that my hands are not being lifted to go to the other side, mm -hmm. but they go from one spot to the next so that I make sure I cover the entire area. Okay. okay? Gradually, and you go around until you finish the entire breast. As I palpate, I feel for the type of breast tissue that you have, and if you have any swelling or lumps in the area. Okay. There are different types of breast tissue. Yes, you have what is smooth, you have what is kind of lumpy or cystic. Okay, and that is why every client needs to know exactly how their breast feels. Now, right there on the area that you always have this area that feels a little more lumpy, that's normal. The Island Health View team had a one on one interview with a cancer survivor and president of the Dominica Cancer Society, Mrs. Kathleen Cornelius. She gave us an insight as to the present situation with cancer on the island and how they assist families going through the ordeal. Today we are here with a cancer survivor and president of the Dominica Cancer Society, Ms. Kathleen Cornelius, who is also a teacher at the Dominica Grammar School. Good morning, Ms. Cornelius. Good morning. Well, today we have you here and we're going to try to get some information from you. To, as to the insight as to how the Dominica Con Cancer Society deals with assisting the families, how do you help them get through the ordeal when a family member is diagnosed with cancer? At the Dominica Cancer Society, we see ourselves performing ferals, the most important being support. So when a patient first is diagnosed, the news can be devastating. So we provide support in the form of counseling for the patient and their family because we acknowledge that it is not only the patient going through the ordeal but it's also the family, especially where there are young children. And we have come to the realization that cancer affects every individual. So what we have done through our, our systems, we are able to provide counseling. We have a touch with us, a counselor. And we also have a health educator, and they provide that counseling for the, the various family members. Apart from support, we provide financial support because um, the cost of cancer treatment is rather absorbent, and we have found that many persons are not able to meet the, the bills. So whilst we are not a funding agency, we provide our members with assistance, and we also facilitate the application for assistance through various organizations, whether it is the Arnold Bishat Bogart Fall, the Ross Oncology Clinic. We use different mediums. We write to the credit unions. Whichever um, business out there is willing to assist our members, we prepare letters on behalf of our members, which they are able to take out to those organizations and thereby receive some form of assistance. Okay, wonderful. It sounds like you guys have a lot on your hands we trying try, to deal with this. Try. But it's a really good thing that they're doing basically with this cancer society because to on my in my memory I remember one cancer survivor said there was a certain point when there was nothing for people with cancer. They had to deal with it on their own. Their families had to try to help them. It was very difficult because before having cancer society and this great support that they get, to them it was like literally a death sentence that's what they felt like i remember someone saying that at the community outreach that you had so in your i mean this is part of your theme that you had the past month in february mm -hmm. i remember you said that the theme was something to the extent cancer is not beyond us right and it's not a death sentence so mm -hmm. this is a real positive thing that they're doing and we to me i'm excited that they have this whole concept out there for people going through this ordeal because it's sort of so detrimental that people get this sort of support and a lot of people don't really understand that there is a chance of survival so having you guys here 
to show them to help them to give them that shoulder it's really a good thing like honestly i myself is i'm thankful <laughs> for that because i feel that if someone in my family locally has to be affected it would be great to know that you all this group is there to support them you know and all right now how do you feel about the level of cancer what exactly is your insight as to the level of cancer affecting our dominican people well honestly <laughs> This is one of the, the sore points for us because as a society, we continue to make an appeal to the general public. For us, our motto is early intervention saves lives. And we acknowledge that if a, a one's cancer is detected at an early stage, your survival rate increases drastically. And we continue to make appeals to the general public to have themselves checked we provide screening opportunities for both men and women for our various programs. And still we are finding that more and more persons are being diagnosed at late stages. And for us, that is, I would say, a sore point because sometimes it feels that the message is not getting across to the right audience. And we would really want to make an appeal. I mean, this is an ideal forum to make an appeal to our men and women out there there is an increase in breast cancer in Dominica, and there's an increase in prostate cancer. And these are the two leading causes of death, cancer-related deaths in Dominica. So we want to again admonish the general public to get themselves checked to your regular pap smears, your breast screening, your health checks. And you know the beautiful thing about Dominica, through the primary health care program, we are able to attain those treatments free of charge. So unlike many islands like Venice, um, Guyana, for instance, or many of the Central American countries where women still have to pay to get a pap smear done, in Dominica it is free. And we need to ensure that we take all the opportunity, we make use of the opportunity to get ourselves checked. Because it is only when cancer is detected early that we are able to live productive lives. And if you look at the statistics, it will indicate that, especially among women, we are losing women between the ages of 35 to 45. And that is really the productive years of the woman's life. And we know that in the society we live, in most households, women are the breadwinners. And because we are losing so many women, young women, we are finding that this is having an effect on the very family structure. So we really want to make an appeal as a society to encourage each and every person out there, whether you are male or female. If you can't afford to go to a private doctor's, please go through the primary health care system and get yourself checked. Okay, wonderful. This is actually a great idea for the Dominican public. It's not just an idea, it's a fact. If you have the opportunity to save your life, save the life of your sister, your mother, even your brother, you know, you can just spread the word, get yourself checked. Get, you can probably do it as a family, you know, because since it's available at the health centers, as she said, you know, you can just go in there. If you're nervous, you just bring everybody if you can. The Island Health Youth Team, we are appealing to the Dominican public right now. Get your checks, get your screenings done, because as she said, it is a necessity to have early detection. The earlier you find out what is going on in your body, the sooner you can get rid of it. So basically, that's what we're trying to do here. I mean, with Island Health Youth, that is the point, to bring out a message on health issues affecting Dominicans. That is our point, that's our focus. So today I want to thank Mrs. Cornelius for joining us and assisting us in bringing out the world. Excitement. Tune in to the Tiny Green Show every other Monday on Digital Play TV Channel 3.
another one of our cancer survivors, Augustina Bernard, who hails from the village of Delis, gave her testimonial at the event, telling her experience after being diagnosed and surviving the deadly disease. I'm Augustina Bernard from Delis. I was diagnosed with cancer in 2006 and the surgery 2007. So on the 8th of on the 11th of this month of April will give me eight years since I had surgery. Okay. 2006. Well, I usually make my breast examination. I observe I had a lump in the breast. And then I say, what? Let me go to the nurse. I went to nurse, our district nurse, and she sent me to doctor. From doctor, they sent me down to the hospital. I had the surgery done. Doct I did the surgery. I was okay. I went through chemo. And from chemo, that's it. I continue with my medication. Until five years after, they stop medication. I keep on exercising, taking my diet, and encouraging other people to do their breast examination. Their self, don't wait until it is too late to check the nurse or the doctor because you'll be a dead body and nobody will know anything about you. So please check yourself, check the doctor and see about yourself. Because when I went to Dr. Paul, the first they do the biopsy. After the biopsy, doctor called me in his office and told me, well, my lady, he said, he didn't say my lady, young lady. Yes, <laughs> young lady, look this and look that. And only myself alone that went to the doctor, nobody else went with me. But when doctor told me, well, look this and look that, I said, well, praise God. He said, my lady, you saying praise God. I say, well, God said to give thanks and praise in everything. So anyway, I did not scream. I don't, you just see the tears coming out. And then I went home. I told my people about it. Oh my God, that's the worst thing I ever did. Everybody started to cry. I said, oh, you cannot cry. All you have to help me. Because if all you don't support me, how am I going to do it? And then little by little but i'm a strong person praying going to church i never give up so they were there down they tell me how i going through the chemo i say god will provide i went through the chemo my head dropped everything imagine when one morning when i get up to get myself ready to to go to church my head started to drop but i did not give up i tie my head and I went to church and from that time I never give up going to meetings going everything I never 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 give up and that is why I can stand here today and say thank God that I'm alive and to all our survivors and those who are presently fighting the battle against cancer from us here at the Island Health you team we send you hope we send you love we send you prayers as you go through this situation in your life. And to someone dear to my heart, a brave warrior, Miss Dennis Bowers, I send you love and all the strength that you need as you go through this transition and you fight this war against cancer. And now, stay tuned for the new Beauty on a Budget with your host, JL Joseph. Welcome to Beauty on a Budget, a special segment on this program. Today we'll explore body care beauty on a budget. The skin is the largest organ and this is usually the first thing someone else sees on you. Taking care of your skin should be a top priority. On a different program, we'll explore treatment of a few skin disorders that we may face. The more popular skin disorders that we face regularly would include acne, which is caused by the inflammation and infection of the sebaceous glands of the skin. The sebaceous glands are stimulated by hormones, particularly 
androgens to avoid acne cut back on saturated and hydrogenated fats in margarines and processed foods also cut down on junk food as well as foods high in sugar such as cakes and biscuits eat more raw vegetables whole grains fish fruit try to include selenium rich foods now you may ask what is selenium selenium is a powerful antioxidant it works alongside other antioxidants such as vitamin e and c and is essential for the immune system good sources of selenium are fish shellfish eggs tomatoes and broccoli Another very common uh, skin condition that we face here in Dominica is eczema, which usually begins as a patchy redness, often on the hands, and can appear anywhere else on the skin. Although there are many triggers, one of the most common is food sensitivity. The most common offended foods are milk, eggs, fish, cheese, nuts, and food additives. Omega-3 fats, zinc, and vitamin E may help reduce such symptoms. Eating foods. Fruits and vegetables contain powerful antioxidants that help to protect the skin from the cellular damage caused by free radicals. What are free radicals? Free radicals are caused by smoking pollution and sunlight and can cause wrinkling and age spots. Eat a rainbow of colorful fruits and vegetables and aim for at least five portions a day. Better carotene found in pumpkin, carrots and sweet potatoes and lutein found in papaya and spinach are potent antioxidants important for normal skin cell development and healthy skin tone. Vitamin C is also a super antioxidant. It is needed for a strong immune system, radiant skin and helps blemishes heal properly. The best sources are oranges, sweet potatoes and guava. They all help to produce collagen that strengthens the capillaries and supply the skin. Stock up on selenium, vitamin E. Vitamin E protects the skin from oxidative, which is cell damage, and supports healthy skin growth. Foods high in vitamin E include almonds, avocado, hazelnuts, pine nuts, and sunflower and corn oils. Zinc is involved in the normal functioning of the sebaceous glands in the skin, which produce oil and helps to repair skin damage and keep the skin soft and supple. Zinc-rich foods include fish, lean red meat, whole grains, poultry, nuts, seeds, and shellfish. Drink up. Skin needs moisture to stay flexible. Even mild dehydration will cause your skin to look dry, tired, and slightly gray. Drink six to eight glasses of water a day. All fluids count towards your daily allowances, but water is the best. If you work in the office, keep a large bottle of water on your desk to remind you to drink. Herbal caffeine-free teas are good too. Try to avoid smoking and excessive alcohol consumption. Both can age the skin. Finally, once you make changes to your diet, don't expect an overnight miracle. It takes six weeks for new skin to emerge up to the surface, so the visible benefits from dietary changes will take just as long. For persistent skin conditions, talk to your general practitioner or consider seeing a dermatologist. And that's all folks for this edition of Island Health View. Be sure to join us for our next episode on April 3rd, 2015. Until then, I am your presenter, Rima Alfred. Thanks for watching.